Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and we're thrilled to be joined today by Christopher Blythe. Thanks for being here. I'm excited. Christopher Blythe is an assistant professor of English at Brigham Young University, and he teaches courses on folklore and Latter-day Saint literature. He's previously held positions at the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship and the Joseph Smith Papers, and he served as an editor for the Journal of Mormon History for a number of years. He also hosts a wonderful podcast with his wife, Christine, called Angels and Seer Stones, a Latter-day Saint folklore podcast, which I recommend checking out for some fun stories. Thank you. Yeah. So today we're looking at Mormon 1 through 6, and the artwork that we're looking at is by Dale Kilborn. It's called Nephite's Last Battle. Um, we think this is from around the 1960s, although there isn't really a date um, associated with it. Uh, it is included in the church media library as one of 87 Book of Mormon artworks that they have there. So I think that's interesting that this is one that they've picked to represent the Book of Mormon. Absolutely. Can you, so I think we're in Mormon 6, chapter 6 mm -hmm. here. Can you first tell us kind of what's happening in this artwork? Gosh. <laughs> you know, Mormon 1 through 6 is all really interesting. And it's mm -hmm. about, uh, here we have a prophet who's called to this people, mm -hmm. and they're not doing well. Yeah. There's a lot of problems with the Nephites in Mormon's day, which is all leading up to here. There's been a lot of bloodshed, a lot of wars, and uh, Nephites aren't winning these wars. Right. They're losing again and again, and then they retreat. Um, in fact, it's not until uh, right before here, they've retreated a number of times within the book. Finally, Mormon sends a letter to the Lamanites, mm -hmm. and he says, uh, let us go to Camorra, what they call Shim earlier in their chapter. This, right. this hill that was important to the Nephites, and let us live there, and eventually we can have our final day, yeah. which uh, Mormon's been dreading. Um, he's aware that this is the very last moment on the battlefield, and uh, mm -hmm. he's still going to be there with his troops, at mm -hmm. least for a while. Um, so this is the preparation for the last war. Um, I think there is so much about this painting that captures my imagination. Okay. Um, I love that you gave me uh, Jenny gives us a choice of what we want to talk about right. on these paintings. <laughs> and I really love this one. Um, I mean, so here we have, and it, it's difficult. We don't have a commentary on this painting. We don't have a right. pack, placard that tells us what's going on. Right. But when I first looked at it, I thought, here is the Nephites on the left, and then coming down from the hill were invading Lamanites. Because mm. um, a lot of this passage talks about the fear they had seeing the invading armies. I'm not sure if that's what's intended. It's also possible this is all Nephites. And right. they're waiting. They're still gathering. And here we have uh, this man sending out a warning saying, come in, let's prepare for this battle. Mm -hmm. And of course we have Mormon giving something of a sermon. I think it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Mormon has his hand out exactly like Arnold Freeberg has in his famous yeah. post-battle painting uh, where Mormon bids farewell, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like this image. I love the, the yellow that dominates all of it. I like the lightning strike in the distance. Isn't okay. that cool? Okay, yeah. Um, all right, I'll stop getting excited about it. That's the setup. <laughs> There's about to yeah. be a lot of bloodshed, right. but first we're going to gather everybody together, and Mormon looks like a leader. Yeah. Now this is interesting. You point out that it's not immediately clear what's happening. Partly, I think, we don't have a lot of images of this moment, mm -hmm. um, and or really, really of Mormon 1 through 6 at all. But So we're not totally clear. Are these all Nephites? Are some of them Lamanites? Are they being attacked by this group? up on the hill, or is that part of their group they're drawing in? Is, is Mormon maybe directing them to Camorra? We're, we're not totally sure. And that's, I mean, I think that's kind of interesting that this is just, we don't really have a visual canon around these moments like we do mm. for, like, first vision. Like, we know what a first vision looks like, right? Yes. We don't... Or Nephi's travels. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, but it is, it is interesting, too, that, as you pointed out, other artists have done a lot of the sort of disastrous aftermath of the battle. Mm. Um, and this, I think, is the only one that really shows 
the moment right before. So how does that function for you? How does that work differently? Or what's, what's the message that that, that yeah. imparts? You? Well, one, it invites me to think about what's going on in their minds. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, Mormon tells us early on that he's lost hope. Mm. And I look at this leader, I mean, he's certainly... Uh, when I imagine Captain Moroni like rallying the troops, yeah. it's it's not that. So maybe there's some comparison here. I look at it and I wonder. Mormon talks about how they're f- afraid. They're afraid, like the wicked are afraid to mm-hmm. die. Mm-hmm. And so I look at these images of the men on the left, and I wonder if I can detect that in some of their eyes and some of their bearings. Hmm. Um, really, I think showing it beforehand builds up a lot of anticipation Uh, in the hobbit there's this this wonderful setup for the battle of the five armies right this ending to the story of the hobbit and the setup scene is part of the way that the war is depicted Hmm. Um, and so i think sometimes that opening scene is a really nice way of getting us set up to feel that anticipation of battle yeah Um, i would also say that i think mormon would like this depiction a lot more than Arnold Freeberg's depiction. Um, of the post-battle. Yeah, yeah, the post-battle and of the blood and the gore of it. Okay. He was really concerned about uh, not wanting to discuss just the extent of how bloody and gory this got. He talked about okay. growing up in a scene where there was blood and mm-hmm. gore and wickedness all around. And here we have an artist that's saying, well... Why don't we, yes, you know, we Latter-day Saints always say the Book of Mormon would be R-rated. Well, oh, sometimes right. <laughs> if you start with this opening scene, we get a nice PG-13. Yeah, you still get the sense of approaching horror, but mm-hmm. without all the yeah. horror and blood. Yeah. I, I really like the mm-hmm. setup and the foreboding lightning in the background, far mm-hmm. away, but coming. And, and why did you say you think Mormon would like this better? Well, because Mormon talks about it being uh, not wanting to share all these things. There's okay. a, uh, he says, it's impossible for tongue to describe or for man to write a perfect description of the horrible scene of blood and carnage, which was among the people. And every heart was hardened, so that they delighted in the shedding of blood continually. Uh-huh. I think Mormon wasn't really into mm-hmm. uh, violence. I don't think he was into yeah. this moment. And it's actually this great sorrow. This is the worst moment of Nephite civilization. Right. Uh, maybe Third Nephi ten or something has a similarity to it. Yeah. But um, this isn't a happy day for anybody. Yeah. Okay, so I know in, in a lot of your scholarship, you've talked about folklore traditions and also apocalypse um, yeah. narratives. And you wrote this really great book called Terrible Revolution. Mm-hmm. And you talk about these sort of narratives of apocalypse and especially an American apocalypse. Yeah. Can you tell us if you see some of that happening here? Are there symbols that might make oh. you, that are sort of related to apocalypse themes? I think absolutely. I, I think the very war, the story of a population about to collapse is what an apocalypse is, right? So the Book of Mormon has several apocalypses in it. And this is the setup um, to a major one that's going to wipe out an entire civilization. When I look at this, um, I mean, obviously, we think about wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. This is a Mm -hmm. crucial image. We have the prophet who's given up hope. When do civilizations die? It's when they've bought into secret combinations. It's when they've turned completely. When they sorrow, they don't sorrow for repentance. Um, Yeah. All of that is going on in this scene. I I really do think, um, how do you want to show the... uh, In the Bible, we have a lot of cosmic signs of apocalypse, like the moon turning to blood and the sun going black and stars Mm -hmm. falling from the sky. Yeah. Um, lightning shows up a lot in the Book of Mormon. Lightning? Okay. Yeah, as yeah. an apocalyptic sign. Yeah. Fire shows yeah. up as an apocalyptic yeah, sign. Yeah, see that little fire here and the smoke. Absolutely. I think this yeah. yellow color is mm-hmm. the cast of something ominous, but yeah. is the cast of fire? For sure, yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's, there's a lot of interesting things. It's also a fall scene, which is kind of fun. Yeah, and you see the leaves, so there's like winds, maybe a tempest mm-hmm. coming. Yes. With this lightning. 
And I think there's actually an adaptation of this painting that you mentioned to me, mm -hmm. showed me, where motion's really important, where the hair of Mormon is blown it's back, blowing more. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So motion and just the chaos of this moment before the armies arrive. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the, the image of a last battle shows up in apocalypse stories all the time. It's usually uh, Armageddon, right? Okay. This last battle. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, we know that in the story of the last days, mm -hmm. that last battle ends with God defending him mm -hmm. and them and the people being protected. It's the righteous who are back together. It's a different story here where people have turned from God and uh, unfortunately they're left to their own strength and have to withstand an army that's much more powerful than they are. Right, yeah. right. Um, another symbol I noticed here, you mm. mentioned the guy blowing the horn. Um, yeah. And it looks to me like a, like a shofar, like this sort of Jewish ram's horn that we read about in Joshua or Judges yeah. in the Old Testament that was used for religious holidays, I mm -hmm. think, but also could be used to indicate the start of a war or like this kind of warning call before the beginning of a battle. And I just think that's an interesting element that he's bringing in that, like, like Israelite heritage here of these mm. people. Um, I mean, they don't look like Israelites, but 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 just I think it's good. Yeah, it's kind of this, um, like, sort of hearkening back to where they came from and kind of where where they've fallen, like where they've ended up in this in this terrible moment. Um, but Absolutely. then maybe also. A little bit of like looking forward to the restoration of these tribes of Israel in in the actual last days, right? When when Christ I does like come. That. Again. This is something that's going through Mormon's mind throughout this, right? So mm -hmm. the chapters tell us he's absolutely given up hope. Right. He sees all this bloodshed, they retreat again and again. They're, they no longer have the Holy Ghost. The yeah. three Nephites have taken off. Yeah. All these things are going on. They they act sorry, but they don't repent. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's going on within his mind. But he also sends a message right after this and before this to us mm -hmm. to say that the restoration is coming and that, uh, you know, look out for the last days and I see you. All those things are are coming up. And even right at this moment, I wonder... You know, is this box here mm -hmm. connected to the burial of the plates that's mentioned in this chapter? Yeah. Are those the remaining plates they kept? Are these the plates about to go down? Oh, but it, that's right. what it invokes for me. Right. right, yeah, I think that's exactly right. Hmm. Which, of course, is the key to restoration, bringing forth the Book of Mormon. Yeah, so that's yeah. interesting. There is this, like, impending... <laughs> catastrophe, but still like hope um, for the future restoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else you want to add about these chapters or, or this artwork? I think um, the Book of Mormon is an apocalyptic text. And okay. so one of the reasons I think it's great to pinpoint a moment like this in art is to remind us that way. You know, I used Arnold Freeberg's farewell to the, yeah. the Nephites in my book. Because um, I think it's, it, it makes that point for us. The okay. Book of Mormon is telling us a story about apocalypse. And of course, restoration's implied because we have the book. Right. <laughs> um, but it's, it's important to remind us, which might also point to us, if the Book of Mormon is a message about apocalypse and restoration, mm -hmm. as I believe it is, um, then I see myself in this scene, right? I believe... Hmm. There's going to be some difficult times before the second coming of Christ. Okay. And I don't necessarily want to be like these Nephites who are afraid and scared. Um, I, I think our culture went through a period. In fact, we had a BYU professor issue an apology. Because um, in the 1980s, he presented ideas of the second coming as really scary. Um, rather than really exciting. Okay. Um, but just like the idea is a great and terrible day of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. we, we can experience the idea of Christ's return as a really exciting thing, and that these aren't the events that we would have to worry about, right? right, right. We would think about building Zion and the restoration and yeah. sharing the gospel. And uh, these guys could have had that too, but mm -hmm. uh, 
their fate takes them a different path. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their their motivations were certainly different at that point. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So, right. When I read these verses, the things that it drives me to, because it's bloodshed after bloodshed. <laughs> we have a prophet who knows how this is all going to end up. Yeah. It's not going to go well. I think about Moses. Okay. Um, you know, Terrell Givens has convinced me and tons of others that the most important verses in the Pearl of Great Price are about the God who weeps, right? <laughs> and so Enoch, in this scene in Moses, has a vision, like Mormon, he knows things aren't going to go well for these people. Mm -hmm. He knows, like Mormon a few chapters earlier, that whoever he can convert is who's going to make it through this battle, who can repent. Um, and he doesn't have a lot of luck. Um, Enoch is seeing the flood that's going to happen. He sees this image of Satan laughing. Mm. The same image shows up in our reading in Mormon, that Satan has led them astray directly. Um, this is what I think about it. It says, And Enoch said unto the Lord, How is it that thou canst weep? seeing thou art holy and from all eternity to all eternity. The image that's before this, of course, is the destructions. And he sees God's not discussed directly in these passages. We see Mormons suffering for these right. people. But this brings it to God. God is suffering when he sees this destruction. And then he says, The Lord said unto Enoch, Behold, these thy brethren, they are the workmanship of mine own hands. And I gave unto them their knowledge in the day I created them, and the Garden of Eden gave I unto man his agency, and unto thy brethren have I said, and also given commandment, that they should love one another, and that they should choose me their father. But behold, they are without affection, and they hate their own blood. <laughs> this this scene, right? Yeah. Like, Mormon is try, tried his best, but uh, blood and carnage is the thing. And I like to think about where is God in the chapter. And Moses gives me a hint. What's God doing here? Well. He's planning the next step because that's what God does. Okay. Um, but he's also mourning with his people. Yeah. There's no uh, schadenfreude in this, right? Okay. The idea of taking pleasure from someone's pain. Right. People that present the apocalypse are often accused of mm -hmm. thinking, oh, don't we really want the suffering of these people that are bad or not mm -hmm. like us? And Mormon and God here remind us that's not that's how not. we take someone's suffering. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great perspective. I really appreciate you helping us think through this piece. Um, a piece I really hadn't spent a lot of time looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, think there, I think there's a lot more here once you start digging mm -hmm. into it. And, uh, and these are really, um, really poignant, poignant verses in these Mormon chapters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I learned a lot from the exercise. And thanks for a great podcast. Thank you.